Okay, here's the final installment of this story. Uh, I want to be clear that I'm not telling this story to bash this person. Um, I'm not telling the story to do her any harm. Um, I'm more telling it just because I feel a need to vent. I mean, I'm still dealing with the fact that, uh, you know, that this, this person, this, this woman, uh, referred to me as an abusive narcissist. Now, I under, after everything that happened, now, I understand that, look, I'm very old school. I'm a really old-fashioned guy. And, um... A lot of modern women, especially, you know, modern North American women, Western women, do see guys like me as abusive. You know, I, 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 I'm more like a 1940s or 1950s man than I am a man of this era. I just have the way about me that, uh, that just, I don't know, I'm like a fish out of water in this era, really. But the thing is... Any way you look at it, though, basically my whole thing was keep your word. Look, at my case, my word is really important to me. And I have been burned many times by people who didn't keep their word and by people who saw me as weak. And actually the fact that I am old-fashioned like I am, and there's mosquitoes all around me in here, the fact that I'm old-fashioned like I am is often seen as a weakness by others, you know, and they think they can take advantage of me, they think they can um, push me or bully me or take from me or whatever. But the thing about old-fashioned guys like me is that we'll do business on a handshake, even though it isn't really wise to do that in this modern era. But we also don't tolerate very much, you know, because again, going back to that old era, people did business on a handshake, but if, if, if one party didn't keep their word, he'd be liable to get his head beat in by the other party, you know, I mean, that, that, that's how we were, that's how, that's how people were, that, that's how I still am, and I mean, so... It's not a matter of me being weak. It's a matter of what am I going to do? This is a woman. She's already say she already says I abused her, even though I don't I don't believe I did. What am I going to do? Go over to her house and beat her head in? I, I'll admit that night I was really angry, and I, <laughs> I might have done that. I didn't do it, but I was angry enough to. You know, I definitely did let my temper get the better of me. But at the same time, I had been pushed and jerked around and frustrated to the point and disrespected by her to the point where I was at my limit. And that envelope with $100 in it, when it should have been 200 you know, because that's what we had agreed, um, that was the final straw. That's what pushed me over the edge. I think her asking me if I would do an e-transfer was her hoping that she would try to put a hundred dollars in and said into my account instead of two hundred and I would challenge her about that and we'd end up having a disagreement and then she could just say, Well you get nothing then you know. I think by forcing her to pay me in cash I basically kinda made her give me that hundred. I don't think I would have even gotten that. Because I think she knew that I wouldn't accept a hundred dollars when the agreement was two hundred and that would have got her out of paying anything but here she talked me into letting her pay the money back but then of course she did everything she could not to pay the money back so you know I think it was a matter of her wanting to be right really um, even while she was wrong and I think the same things happening now with this landlord situation you know, I mean, the landlord didn't sublet a part of the house to an actively operating drug dealer. And, you know, believe me, she did know 
that, that the guy was a drug dealer. I know that based on conversations I had with her. Um, this particular person, I kn I've known him, or at least I knew who he was, for 20 years. And I'm... I, 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 I have nothing to do with drugs. I don't do drugs. I have no use for drugs. But the thing is, I don't even like the taking over the counter drug. You know, I have to be in a bad way before I'll take anything. But here's the thing. I have to be really sick or really hurting. But here's the thing. Um, even I knew what this particular person does. I'm not even in that world, and even I knew. It's no secret. In this area, this particular person is well known for, for drug dealing. You know, he's well known for it. Um, I met him once at her house, and of course he, he knew that I knew who he was. And... Um, I think he probably also knew that I'm kind of an old-fashioned, no-nonsense kind of a guy. So seeing me appear there was not a good thing. In his mind, I'm sure it, I'm sure it wasn't, you know. I'd be just not somebody he would want to see at all around there. Anyway, I was introduced to him. I said hello to him. He just gave me a look like he wanted to kill me and turned and walked away from me. So, like I say, he knew, but I knew what he, who he was and what he did and everything. And he knew a little bit about me. His girlfriend at the time was actually a friend of mine, a girl that I'd known, I've known for over 30 years. And in fact, I know who he is because I know her. So, you know... This is what I'm saying. It's all tied in together anyway. Every, it's a small world. It's a very small world, you know. Anyway, um, and look, I, I had an experience one time. There was a fellow in Perth who I knew who was uh, on drugs, and he was in the Methadone program, which was in Smith Falls, which is the town where, that I'm close to now. Perf and Smith Falls are about 12 miles away from each other. I happened to be in my car, back when I still had a car. I had a 1985 Chev Caprice sedan, a four-door Chev Caprice. It was a dark green colored car. It was a beautiful car. Anyway, um, I had that, and... Uh, I, I know, and I was nice and warm and dry in my car and comfortable, and I'm going up, up, heading out of town, and who do I see? But I see this fellow that I know who's on drugs, and he's walking. He's just trudging along there, and it's pouring rain. The guy's soaked to the skin. Turns out he was trying to walk to Smith Falls to get his methadone, to, for his appointment for his methadone. Or, you know, well, I picked him up. I pulled over. I picked him up. I said, come on, I'll take you. We get up there, and we're into the parking. We're in the parking lot of the clinic there where this methadone thing is. He goes inside. I'm sitting there waiting for him. He comes out a little while later, and this fellow comes to the car, 